is Monday, July 3rd, 2017. I would ask everyone in the audience to please stand for a prayer led by Councillor Liz Davis, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm gonna do a quote by Peter Marshall. May we think of freedom, not as the right to do as we please, but as the opportunity to do what is right. Here, here. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation under, under God, God, indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Liz. And may we have roll call, please. Councillor Davis. Here. Councillor Denny. Councillor Edgar. Here. Councillor Falk. Here. Mayor Copen. Here. Deputy Mayor Lee. Here. Councillor Ludwig. Here. Councillor Suzak. Here. Councillor Arnoni. Councillor Bosco. Councillor Sakala. Here. There's eight members present, three are absent. For our um, fire evacuation announcement, I remind everyone in the audience, in the event that the fire alarm sounds here at Town Hall, we all must evacuate the building. Closest exit is to the rear of council chambers and out to the front of town hall. If you choose to take the side door to your right aisle, our left where Comey is, you then take the back set of stairs uh, to the back parking lot of town hall. And in the event that an AED should be needed, there is one located in the lobby here on the main floor of town hall. Minutes of preceding meetings, two of them special meeting June 19th. Motion to approve. By Councillor Falk, Second. seconded by Councillor Sakala. Any discussion? Then by a show of hands, all those in favor, those opposed, unanimous. And the regular meeting of June 19th. Motion to approve. By Councillor Falk. Second. Seconded by Councillor Sakala. Discussion? Show of hands, all those in favor, those opposed, unanimous again. We have no scheduled special guests, so we'll move to public communications and petitions. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the council? Sensing everyone's on summer vacation, we will move to councilor communications and petitions. Any councilor communications? All right, Bill, uh, I guess you can do the me. housekeeping one. Yeah. Um, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion this evening to suspend the rules and move the following items to miscellaneous and potentially proceed to a vote tonight. The items are F, G, H, I, and J. Motion by Deputy Mayor Second. Lee, seconded by Councillor Falk to move those items to miscellaneous. Discussion? Sensing none, show of hands. All those in favor? Those opposed? Unanimous as well. That's Any all. other Councillor communications? So I'll give one <clears throat> shameless plug, um, and that is uh, as we lead into the 4th of July town celebration this weekend, just encourage residents to come down to the town green Friday, July 7th through Sunday, July 9th for the 33rd um, celebration on our town green. Highlights, music, taste of Enfield, a parade on Saturday, and a great fireworks display Sunday night. So um, looking forward to seeing many, many people uh, to come out and enjoy the weekend. So then we'll move to the town manager report and communications, Brian. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Included in your, uh, included with your packet, I should say, were uh, several memorandum from uh, department heads uh, representing what was a modified uh, PAR uh, for this packet. Uh, be more than happy to answer any questions regarding that information. Uh, just a couple of additional items that were not included, but that I did want to touch on. Um, we did receive some communications uh, from a couple of different counselors, uh, one with respect to a series of questions on Manning Road. We are in the process of uh, reaching out to the various departments to get those questions addressed. Uh, we also had a question regarding the scope of the library sidewalk project. Um, did want to touch on that, that that project uh, is complete and was within the scope that was bid. Uh, there was concern about the existing um, uh, blacktop sidewalk that is on the side of the central library that was not included in the initial scope uh, but uh, we are going to send some folks out there uh, to do our best to kind of patch that together also there is apparently a uh, tax issue uh, with respect to the Thompsonville fire department and Sorry. their um, uh, motor vehicle millage rate uh, they had sent a letter to the town uh, back on I believe it was May 11th advising us that they did set the rate 
uh, for that tax, uh, but their intent was not to collect on the motor vehicle tax. So uh, the town did, based on the information we had available properly, invoice or tax residents for those motor vehicles based on that rate. Uh, it's been uh, communicated to me through the mayor that uh, those folks, the Fire Commission, Thompsonville Fire Commission, will be meeting to determine what the best method uh, to address that issue is. So um, I did want to put that out there. Lastly, uh, there were a couple of questions, and I'll, uh, I'll save them uh, for the appropriate time on the list, but there were a couple of questions that came up at leadership with respect to the uh, BL Companies contract uh, legislation, which is on the agenda. So I do have that information that, that was requested at leadership, and I'll address it at that time. So. Uh, right. Any other questions? I'll be more than happy to answer. Thanks, Brian. Red? No uh, can you update me on the Pearl Street Library? There was a complaint that came in to you, and uh, you were passing it to Public Works. Has anything been done on that? Uh, that I don't know the answer to, sir. I assigned that down, and I, I assume that was scheduled. And if it is not done, it is being done. But I can follow up with you on Wednesday morning uh, via email. Uh, when, when we're all back from the holiday. I, I appreciate that. Sure. Yes, sir. Peter? Um, back several months ago, we were discussing the library and the air conditioning situation. It was going to be finished by the end of June. Do you know if that happened or not? Um, we did receive a report. There was a few days slippage um, in the schedule as a result slippage. of the asbestos remediation. Um, but I do not recall that the date was significant. I believe the system is operational but in its basic sense, but I don't believe that all the control zones are working um, as designed. So I will confirm that, though, uh, Wednesday morning. I know it gets pretty hot there in the summertime. It would be nice if it was complete and operational. Sure. And in the event we do run into any issues, we do have those portable units that are available. But. Um, like I said, I will uh, confirm Wednesday morning that uh, we are at least have an operational, uh, basically a basic operational system. All right. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions for Brian? All right. Thank you very much, Brian. Town Attorney Report and Communications. Chris. No report to see to Mr. Mayor. No formal report. Any questions for our Town Attorney? Thank you, Chris. Reports of special committees of the council. Any update from the Enfield High School Renovation Building Committee? Or we're good? We're good? And, Red, do you have a question? I have a question for either of the committee members. Has anything been done about the vandalism in the school that was brought up last time? Well, I think they're working yes. on it internally. Yes, and they're, people, yeah, and then the, the, the board of ed is taking done. care of that. Yeah. Yes, through administration and in conjunction with the Enfield Police Department. All right. And then from JFK pre-referendum committee, um, I know that Mike. No, go ahead. Uh, through the mayor, through town manager, we we have the debt um, estimation out that the numbers hit the paper by the August meeting. Know, the, the potential impact of the town and also if if the state doesn't pass a new budget based on the mini budget my understanding there's no bonding in that budget is that correct does that affect this at all uh, I can't speak to the issue of the state's impact the state's proposed budget impact on our budget at this time um, what I can say is, is is that the debt service and the debt schedule that is something that the finance director is working on um, in advance of future issuance. Thank yes. you. Yep. Thank you. Go ahead, Bill. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Development Services Subcommittee uh, does have a meeting planned um, next week. There'll be an agenda and a confirmation of that coming out in the next day or two. Um, and I want to let everyone know that the um, Economic Development Commission met with staff um, at their meeting in June, and they received a um, pretty in-depth package of a template of the uh, tax increment financing policy, which is the first step that a municipality takes before in considering any actual TIF district designation. And the policy um, is somewhat fashioned on, on what Windsor Locks has achieved. They were the first municipality to, to enact the legislation. Um, 
and the commission will be meeting at its July session to uh, work with staff to make sure that it's appropriately tuned up for Enfield. So more on that uh, probably at the August meeting of council. Okay. Any other, any other reports yeah. to special committees of the council? Okay. Uh, old business. Uh, appointments town council appointed all I know item 24 planning and zoning commission is there a motion to remove the item from the table so moved by Councilor Sakala second by Councilor Edgar by a show of hands all those in favor those opposed items been removed and may we have a nomination Virginia Higley a motion for Virginia Higley second. seconded by uh, by Councilor Edgar seconded by Councilor Sakala is there a motion to close nominations so by Councillor Falk, seconded by Councillor Suzak, by a show of hands. All those in favor? Those opposed? Nominations are closed. Any discussion? Donna? Um, since we have full members now on planning and zoning and full members on inland wetlands, is there any thought? I feel like I'm echoing. You are. Uh, okay. Is there any thought to just combining those two since we seem to have difficulty um, finding um, independent members for those boards? That's the first. <laughs> Is that a question to me? That's a question. I'm throwing it on the floor. I, so you know, I feel like, you know, these, these two are very important land use boards, and we can't get qualified people for either board. So we have people on both boards. And at one time they were a single board, as Chris has pointed out to us. And I'm just taking a step back for efficiency and listening to Brian that we have too many commissions and too many people doing a million things that if we consolidate, maybe we can do a better job. And that's just, you know, I just feel that I just want to do a good job. I want good people that are in there that are skilled in what they do. So I know I like to surprise people. That's Scott's just looking at me. <laughs> it's it's for, just. For, um, so, Chris. Uh, uh, what I could do, Mr. Mayor, if there's an interest in it, in it uh, by the um, council, we could look into that to see if there's any prohibitions today statutorily that would prohibit it and what the pros and cons would be and how you would go about doing it and have a report for you at the meeting uh, in August. September. August, or September. September. We'll look at it. I, I don't think it should be that complex. And then you could decide if there's interest. Okay. Red? Well... The first thing I wanted to say is, Donna, we have somebody already with an application to fill this when it comes opening. So that, that will be filled. It was given at leadership, but it wasn't due to come in now. It was not due to the opening is there. And I, I, I would really want to think about combining the two. Uh, off the top of my head, I disagree with it, uh, but I would look at it. Donna? In reality, Reg, you really have combined them. Yeah. Mike? Just curious, what, uh, through the mayor, to the town manager, would this help or should, would this help efficiency with the town staff? So one of the, the complaints I hear is that it's tough, again, just because of we don't have as much staff as we used to have, getting, you know, getting applications approved and going through that process by, again, as you're looking through the legal aspect, what about from a Right. You know, from an efficiency aspect too, as well. Not just you know, not questioning whether we have qualified bodies or not. Just right. questioning, hey, would this actually help the staff and folks who are coming into town who want to get you know get these applications moving a little quicker? And maybe they are. So I, I think that there are two things that we could do. Um, one is the combination of as many like and similar bodies doing you know combine those so that we have that we minimize that duplication of always preparing packets um, I think another thing that, that we can look at doing is setting some hard and fast advance or deadlines in advance of these meetings so one of the things that I've noticed that we've tried to do in a couple of different venues is in an effort to be customer friendly we try and take stuff up until the last minute to try and get an applicant or to try to get somebody on the agenda and then that 
delays getting the agenda out, that delays providing a quality review and analysis. And so those are some of the things that we're going to start talking about at the staff, le or at least at the, the senior level, about can these types of changes make improvement. So I think there's some merit in the one, but I think it, it's only one step of many to improve the efficiency and quality of the product we deliver. Great. Sure. Uh, I appreciate that. It's actually good news. I agree. Sometimes when you actually try to be too accommodating, you know, the path to destruction is led with good intentions. And, and again, and, and I'm not saying that is, but I think you're right. If you actually have some sort of time frame where businesses and applicants understand that, then you're right. I think you actually maybe make it more efficient just by having that, that process set up. Right. So thank you. Sure. Peter? Uh, I was on planning and zoning back in the 80s when it was split. <laughs> and one of the things that I recall about that is the fact that our meetings were going until 11, 11.30 at night because we were doing double duty. And, you know, from a, from a resident standpoint, serving on a board or a commission, you don't want to be around here 11, 11.30 at night for every meeting. So it was decided to split them. And... To the best of my knowledge, it's worked out well. As far as staffing, that's another issue. Uh, whether you have one commission or two commissions, staffing is still going to be an issue, so I don't know that it's going to solve anything. Thank you. Red? Uh, I mean, we're really straying from the subject, but I'll stray a little further. And I know you're overloaded, Brian, but some of the people that their com term of office is up have not been contacted to see if they would renew. Example, Fair Rent Commission. I know people, the one, at least one person who wants to come back on hasn't been called or notified. Anyone else? So we are discussing an appointment to the Planning and Zoning Commission. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion on Virginia Higley? Sensing none. Roll call, please. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Edgar. Four. Councillor Falk. Virginia Higley. Mayor Copen. Virginia Higley. Deputy Mayor Lee. Four. Councillor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Suzak. Virginia Higley. Councillor Sakala. Ginny Higley. There's eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Any other appointments by the town council? Appointments by the town manager all remain on the table, as well does item C, D, E, and F, correct? New business, um, the sidewalk through driveway policy will be uh, brought back up at our August meeting. Correct, yep. So we move to items for discussion, <coughs> items F, G, H, I, and J have been moved to miscellaneous. So item E, which is the one-year contract extension with the Enfield Police Employees Association, that moves to our August meeting to meet the statutory uh, ten at minimum of 10-day posting period for a contract. Um, so we'll take that up at our August meeting, and it meets the deadline that was set between uh, the bargaining unit and the town. Um, discuss, so we've got the item for uh, tower lease with option with T-Mobile Northeast LLC um, based on some conversations today with, with our town attorney. Is it, uh, Chris, your recommendation that that item be removed from the agenda? or what? No, uh, actually a representative was here this evening and I spoke to him, I'll be meeting with him. There are a few um, issues uh, in the contract that we need to address to protect the interest of the town at the public safety complex and our 911 system. He's very amenable and after speaking to him directly, I think that we'll be able to work them out and have it ready for the next meeting in August. For the August meeting. Yes. Okay, so that will move to, to August. All right, so we will move right to miscellaneous. And the first item under miscellaneous is discussion resolution, resolution regarding the referral to the Planning and Zoning Commission for the conveyance of land. Whereas the town of Enfield owns a parcel of land known as Lot 69 on Assessor's Map 59, and whereas the parcel of land was acquired through foreclosure September 17, 1990, 
And whereas the town council must refer the proposed transaction to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a report in conformance with the requirements of Connecticut General Statute Section 8-24. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the proposed acquisition of the two lots is hereby referred to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a report in conformance with the requirements of Connecticut General Statute Section 8-24. So moved. By Councillor Falk. Second. Second by Councillor Ludwig. Discussion? Sensing none, roll call, please. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Got that wrong, sorry. <laughs> Caught me off guard. Well, I can see why. <laughs> Councillor Edgar. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Copen. Four. Deputy Mayor Lee. Four. Councillor Ludwig. <clears throat> Four. Councillor Suzak. Four. There's eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Next item, discussion resolution, resolution authorizing the town manager to sign the Connecticut State Department of Education after school program for grades K through 12 for fiscal year 18 and fiscal year 19, a grant application. So moved. Resolved that the town manager, Brian R. H. Chadkowski, is empowered to sign a grant <coughs> application in the name and on behalf of the town of Enfield with the Connecticut State Department of Education for fiscal year 2017-2018 and fiscal year 2018-2019 and to affix the corporate seal. Moved by Councilor Falk, seconded by second. Councilor Davis. Discussion? Mike? Uh, through the mayor to the town manager. Just question, um, it says that the Department of Education could potentially provide 150 to 200,000. Is that, what is the actual grant amount for? Is it not spe specified or just uh, you, you apply for a grant and the money gets allocated by the state? So my understanding is is, is that you apply for a, an amount that you would like from the program, but there is a sliding scale based on the total number of dollars available and the total number of applications. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Sure. Yep. Go ahead, Bill. Brian, do you know how soon this application is going to be ready? Um, I believe this one is end of the month that it's due. Um, yes, it's due to at the end of the month. Now, how long it's going to take for them to process that, I don't know. But I would assume that it wouldn't be a fairly long time based on the fact that the dates seem to overlap from the fiscal cycle um, and the application side. Do is this an all or nothing type of an effort from the, our department meaning is the grant is the program going to be set to the limit of the grant or do we expect that this will be a larger initiative on both the town's part and the Enfield public schools so i don't want to speak for the director but based on my experience working with her this program is most likely designed to function around the minimal amount of funding from the state um, and so if we do better in our application than what we anticipate then there's less funds directly from the town coffers towards this program but without a doubt i would expect that we do have some local dollars funding this program that are not committed here to four right well, they would be as part of the operational budget for 2017, but I don't know. But, but I don't know that the dollars allocated in the 2017 budget are going to be more or less than the necessary funds until the grant is awarded. Could could I ask that you forward us the application as soon as it's available? Sure. Thank you. Red. Yeah, I'm not sure if if you know the answer to this, Brian, but the way I read the governor's mini budget, all the grants are going to be on hold. Does this affect the date of this grant? I don't have the answer to that question, sir, but we can follow up um, once we get uh, once we do get that question to the state and we get an answer back. Okay, no, nobody has answered. Well, it's only three days, so. Right. I, I, I would assume that we would fund it with our money first, waiting for the state money to come second. But um, that'll be a conversation that I'll have to have with the director and that she'll have to have with her contacts at the state. And then what happens if we don't get the grant? 
Well, then uh, council will have to make the decision as to whether or not we continue to fund that program until the grant dollars become available or whether or not that becomes the first casualty of tough economic times um, in Hartford. Mike? So Red brought up a good question. So can we anywhere, if, it, if we already had iPod, is there a description of what pro, you know, actual programs the town or the school system is running for this currently? Assuming we've applied for this grant in the past and, got, and gotten it, is that correct? Yes, there would, be a more detailed, there would be a more detailed explanation of the program that we would have to provide to the state. That'd be great. Could you, we get a copy of that too, just so we know what these programs are? So if it comes to, to what sure. Councilor Egger was talking about, we have to make the decision, we'll know what program. Sure. Sure, thank you. So, Brian, just a question. I thought in leadership it was explained that this was a renewal of an existing program. That is correct. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. And we all know everything is up in the air until the state passes yeah. a budget. Yeah. So. Well, I'm just a little worried for finances right. here. Right. All right. Any further questions, Sorry. comments? It's asking too much. You're still at the beach. Roll call, please. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Davis. Four. <clears throat> Councillor Edgar. Four. Councillor Fogg. Four. Mayor Copen. Four. Deputy Mayor Lee. Four. Councillor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Suzak. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. There's eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. All right, next item, discussion resolution. Resolution authorizing the town manager to sign the Connecticut State Department of Education fiscal year 18 and fiscal year 19 Youth Service Bureau and Enhancement Renewal Grant application. Resolved that the town manager, Brian R.H. Chadkowski, is empowered to sign a grant application in the name and on behalf of the town of Enfield with the state, with the Connecticut State Department of Education for fiscal year 2017-2018 and fiscal year 2018-2019 and to affix the corporate seal. So by Councilor second. Falk, seconded by Councilor Ludwig. Discussion? Sensing none, roll call please. <clears throat> Councilor Davis? Four. Councilor Edgar? Four. Councilor Falk? Four. Mayor Copen? Four. Deputy Mayor Lee? Four. Councilor Ludwig? Four. Councilor Suzak? Four. Councilor Sakala? Four. There's eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Next item, discussion resolution. Resolution authorizing the town manager to sign the application for the renewal grant and enter into agreement with the East of the River Action for Substance Abuse Elimination Incorporated. Resolved that the town manager, Brian R.H. Chadkowski, is empowered to sign a grant application in the name and on behalf of the town of Enfield with East of the River Action for Substance Abuse Elimination Incorporated for fiscal year 2017-2018 and to affix the corporate seal. Be it further resolved that the town manager, Brian R.H. Chadkowski, is empowered to sign a grant agreement in the name and on behalf of the town of Enfield with the East of the River Action for Substance Abuse Elimination Incorporated for fiscal 2017 2018 and to affix the corporate seal subject to the review and approval of the town attorney. So moved by Councillor Falk, seconded Second. by Councillor Ludwig. Discussion? Roll call, please. Councillor Davis? Four. Councillor Edgar? Four. Councillor Falk? Four. Mayor Copen? Four. Deputy Mayor Lee? Four. Councillor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Suzak? Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Next item, discussion resolution. Resolution authorizing the town manager to enter into an agreement with BL Companies Incorporated. Whereas the town of Enfield was awarded a Federal Highway Administration grant to conduct activities to provide high-speed rail crossing access to the Connecticut River. And whereas the town has reached an agreement with the Federal Highway Administration and the State of Connecticut's Department of Transportation to provide such access in a manner acceptable to the funding source. And whereas the town wishes to retain the firm of BL Companies Connecticut <coughs> Incorporated to perform related engineering and design work which will result in final construction plans and documents. And whereas staff has incorporated changes recommended by the town attorney in his memorandum dated June 9, 2017, 
and whereas the agreement is subject to final review and approval by Connecticut Department of Transportation. Resolved that subject to Connecticut Department of Transportation approval, the town manager Brian R. H. Chadkowski is empowered to enter into the attached agreement in the name and on behalf of the town of Enfield with BL Companies Connecticut Incorporated. So moved. By Councilor Falk. Second. Seconded by Deputy <coughs> Mayor Lee. Discussion? Yeah. Red? I know we touched on it at leadership, but it wasn't quite clear to me why this didn't go out to bid. So um, this is one of the uh, questions, the four questions that came out of leadership. So the first question was, um, can we confirm that this project, that for this project, Beal was selected from a competitive bid process and not directly engaged from our on-call vendor list? Beal does do work as an on-call vendor for the town. And RFQ was released in March of 2014 to solicit this work. So BL Companies was selected from that RFQ process in 2014. So they were not selected just because they were an existing vendor to the town. Um, another question that came up during leadership was, can, um, can we confirm that our 20%, this is a 20% matching grant, um, has been accounted for in the current or in previous CIP budgets? Uh, the short answer is no. Uh, the project was originally started in 2008 by then DPW Director Hawks, um, and it appears that at that time there was a CIP account that was open and initially funded, but through a transition in several positions in public works and in finance, that account was closed. Um, and at, based on the amount of time we've had to research the issue, we don't have an exact um, response as to where that money met, went. We assume it was deposited back into the general fund balance. Um, at this point in time, uh, the finance director and the deputy finance director are looking for uh, the most appropriate place to identify um, the funds necessary for this element of the project, which is 118,000 is our match on the current section. Um, another question was uh, that came up at leadership was because we are working with the railroad viaduct, are we or have we been in communication uh, with the uh, railroad? Uh, the answer to that question is yes. Um, the town is required to um, uh, obtain a permit from Amtrak. Um, initial conversations have begun with respect to that or with, with respect to that permit. Um, and uh, when complete, the overpass will be posted. Um, vehicular traffic under the Isnuntuck viaduct will be closed and it will be limited to pedestrian and bike use only. Uh, uh, removable bollards will be present for emergency vehicle access. And then the last question was whether or not this project, uh, the multi-use uh, path, bike path, would adversely affect the South River Street Bridge project. Uh, the answer to that question is no. As a matter of fact, the South River Street Bridge process improves uh, the functionality of this particular project because it is getting an independent bridge um, and the South River Street Bridge will be narrowed. And as a result of that narrowing, that will increase the amount of room available for this uh, uh, bike pedestrian bridge. So those are the um, four questions uh, that were presented at leadership. Um, I do have some additional graphics for tonight um, with respect to how that plan, how this project is specific. Um, I think you included a diagram for, uh, there was, excuse me, I believe there was included in your packet a diagram about how this one project ties into two others. Um, this graphic is a direct representation of, of this particular project, this specific, this specific river access project that BL has been commissioned uh, or will be commissioned uh, to, uh, to design and engineer. So uh, those are the questions that leadership asked that we have answers to and uh, that's what we have provided. Red. Time frame, when will it start? Uh, the engineering is set to begin, I believe it is later this month. Uh, what the actual design time is, that I don't know, sir. But I know that we are under the gun to get this project uh, engineered and built since the, the funds have been long outstanding. Peter? Uh, this, this project is uh, new to me and I don't really understand what it is we're doing and why. 
I mean, there's already a tunnel there. You can ride a bike through it. Why are we doing anything? So uh, there might be members of council who can better explain this project than I can. But as it has been explained to me several years ago, there was a direct funding award to the town for a river access project. And at that point in time, it was intended to improve river access for, in that instance, fishing, I believe, was the, Which the is ultimate off goal. Of, uh, fair, Fairview or something like that? I believe that, that is correct, sir. Dam. Yes. Yeah. I believe that is correct. Mm -hmm. So there was some initial design work done. There were some conceptual drawings done. And at the time uh, that those documents were complete, there was a community meeting. And the members of that community came together and expressed their dissatisfaction with the proposed project. Um, and so the town took a step back to figure out what was the best response. Um, when taking a step back, there were transitions at the staff and at the council level, and the funds that were assigned that were directly awarded to the town through this earmark um, just kind of sat on the shelf um, until we received a phone call shortly after I arrived, which said, you know, this money's been sitting around for quite some time. It hasn't been touched. Figure out a use for it or we're taking it back. So we had a rather impromptu staff meeting on what was the best way to use this money. And the money had to be used for its initial purpose, which was to improve access to the river. So based on the number of projects that were going on, the type of projects that were going on, and knowing that we had to use this money to improve access to the river, this was the project that was best suited for the use of those funds. And so that was what was assembled. And that is the project that you, you have before you. And what exactly is it we're doing? So in this instance, we're creating, I believe it is a multi-use path, a uh, recreational path, which will tie into um, the path that circles Freshwater Pond. Um, there's also an on-street bike path, which will be connecting to the uh, Windsor Locks Trail that comes over the river and then stops there at Pearl Street. So this will effectively, based on the diagram we've provided, kind of connect all of these trails together and then provide um, a destination point, if you will, which is the end of uh, Main Street, where it dead ends at the old bridge abutment um, for bikers. So that is this particular project, the scope of the project. All right, thank you. Sure. Mike? Uh, th thank you. Uh, again, through the mayor to town manager. So the 3.4 million, that, that, that is a federal grant that if so, 20% of it would be roughly $680,000. Do we have that already allocated in prior budgets? So keep in mind that this is a summary of the project. The 3.4 million was the total earmark to the town, and we had to meet 20%. Um, uh, 3.4 million was the total scope of the project. 20% of that was the town's responsibility, and the rest of it was the direct earmark. Several hundred thousand dollars were spent in the initial design and phasing and conce concepts for this um, over-the-rail fishing. So not all of this money still exists today for the town to spend on this project. So there, there are fewer dollars. Now, how fewer how many less dollars there are available today, I don't know the answer to off the top of my head, other than to say that it is definitively not 3.4 million. So this 118, would, th would there be future allocations from the council? So this is just, so to make sure I understood the grant, or this is to, to put the design work in place so the work can be done. This isn't, right? This isn't funding to get the work done, correct? Correct. So this 118 is our portion of engineering concepts and permits. And, and, and so, um, so when I look at Schedule B, for example, and I, and I see preliminary engineer studies crossed out, so the, the, the dollar amount that's in there, that, is that money already earmarked through the grant, or is that future funding from the town that we have to cover? So, for example, preliminary designers like a uh, specifically Schedule A, paragraph three, one hundred eighty-three thousand. No, so this would be the preliminary design at so this that's point. Already, 
Correct. So that's already done. This is now the technical design. Got so it. this is where we're going to go in the field with surveyors and, and we're going to actually physically engineer construction documents. And so item five, direct cost, who monitors the direct cost? So for, you know, again, they had meals in there, rental cars, stuff like that. Is that the, the, the engineer or is that the town that monitors that? You mean as far as through the services that we would BL, get through right. BL? Right. So BL would submit whatever their expenses are, and then those are reviewed <clears throat> by whoever uh, Public Works has assigned to manage okay. this project right. and then the finance. So if the design work gets done, let's just say by October, I'll throw it out there, then, then what comes before us to actually get the work done? What, what's the next step after that? So then after that would be the formal bidding process. So then we would assemble a bid packet based on these engineering documents. Um, Department of Public Works in concert with the finance department would release the RFP for this project. They would perform the review and evaluation of the bids and then we would bring before the lowest best qualified respondents. So we so, uh, so the money from the federal government, we have that available to actually, once the design work is done, to actually go forward with the project. I guess that's my question. Or will we have to reapply to the federal government to get that money? No, this is a direct earmark to our purpose. So we do not have to apply for anything. Okay, this correct. is our money to spend. If we do not spend it, it will be taken from us. Do we have a time frame if we don't spend it? Has that been told to the town? Yes, we do. Off the top of my head, I don't know what the specific time frame is, but we were told, it you might, know, get it, it was, in gear or get you're going to lose it. It was imminently if we weren't ready to put a project together. And, and, and I apologize. This may be my last question. I apologize. Again, being new to the council, is there, and if it's if it takes some time, it's fine. Is there a summary of all the ongoing grants and projects for the railway-related projects that are going on in Thompsonville? So I know we've we put, we've approved a number of grants and commissions and stuff in the last three months. Right. It would be great just for me and my own edification. Again, understanding. So in a perfect world. 2022 is that when the railroad station we'd hope be open if everything and all the surrounding projects are going you know I mean, i'm just throwing a date out there i'm not not holding it you know what i mean it would be great to have an idea and if we we're you know kind of a summary of here's all the grants here's what we're applying here's hopefully the dates that it gets that gets completed right yeah you know, for my own edification because again, again i just I like just like to kind of understand how all these interconnect with each other yeah you know, we just passed south river street last last meeting I know we've done another study. I forget what it was a couple couple yeah. meetings ago. Just for me to be able to connect the dots, so I know all the studies and how, you know, timely they may be. Sure. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Anyone else? Sensing none. Roll call, please. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Edgar. Abstain. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Copen. Four. Deputy Mayor Lee. Four. Councillor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Suzak. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. We have seven in favor, one abstention, and one is against. So that was seven. Seven in favor. Zero one. Zero against, one abstention. Right. Okay. <clears throat> All right, that completes miscellaneous. Next item on the agenda would be public communications. Since everyone's on vacation, there are no public <laughs> communications. Any councilor communications? Just thank the staff for coming in and for this meeting. <laughs> I really, it's over and above. Thank you. Thank you to us. Yes. Yeah. And <laughs> specifically, and council, Gina, for coming in. <laughs> and the council will not meet again until the first Monday of August. So enjoy your summer. And I forgot to mention that there's actually a car show on Sunday at the at the 4th of July town celebration I was reprimanded via text that I forgot to mention it so um, but we do it's something new something different um, here in the lower level and upper level of of the parking lot so do we have a meeting prior to Mount Carmel no actually because I you better do that for Ed. First week, in a, I think. So uh, it is, I've got it on, it is the um, Friday, August 4th through Sunday, August 6th, the Italian festival, better known as the Feast at Mount Carmel. Yes, and then our next meeting is August, is Monday, August 7th. So. Why not the first? Because the first is a Tuesday. That's right. Very good reason. 
So, is there a motion to adjourn motion by Councillor Falk, seconded by Councillor Davis, by a show of hands. All those in favor? Those opposed, we are adjourned. Have a good evening Happy and a good July.